Hello there, movie maniacs, and welcome to More Movies Weekly, number 23. Enhanced 15 to 23. This is the podcast where we like to talk about films, movies, cinema, what's what, what's hot, and what's not. My name's Greg Fisher. This legendando sitting next to me is Dave Roberts. How's it going, Dave? I'm very well, I'm very well, sir. How are you? I'm very well, too. All the better for seeing you, my darling. <laughs> So, loads to talk about in this show. Let's get cracking straight on with it. 23, coming at you. So, this week we have been watching an old film from 1982 called Class of 1984. This is a bit of an exploitation film about a school that is full of terrible, terrible teenage uh, what would you call them? Criminals, really. They're drug dealing, rapist, pedo, fucking abusive, horrible, nasty students. And we've got a new teacher comes to the school. He's a music teacher. Great guy. Wants to teach his class some some music and just get by. But obviously this gang in the school makes it impossible for him to do so. Things escalate. You can see it coming. This movie's been done probably a million times afterwards. I'm not sure about beforehand. Probably was some sort of stuff like that done beforehand, but not quite in the same exploitation way. Directed by Mark L. Lester, who is probably most famous for having directed Commando. A lot of people love that film. Arnold Schwarzenegger's most famous first sort of shooty, shooty, bang, bang film. Everybody (laughs) loves a bit of Commando, don't they? So bang, bang, shooty, shooty, bang, bang. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I like that. I very much like that. So anyway, um, this was a film that was voted for by our Patreons that we would have a look at. Um, So there we did. We both watched it. I'd never seen this film. And it is the kind of film that is somehow slipped me by because I've seen a lot of films like this from the 80s, the 70s and 80s. It reminded me of a lot of films um in its you know in its general sort of like production value and kind of silliness of it um but i'd never even heard of it to be honest and there it was thrown under our noses class of 1984 we ended up watching it dave tell me your thoughts about this film it's a very interesting film obviously you kind of know going into something like this uh, um the the fact that it's like an exploitation film you know you're going to be in for some um exploitation yeah some you know what some people might call distasteful um absolutely lootly you know uh, absolutely lootly um but you know for, for others it's uh, it's great fun um well i think it can be both yeah it, absolutely it, absolutely know, it's it's it is completely tasteless but at the same time i uh, there was lots of it i was laughing out loud at i personally find it distasteful it's kind of loosely based on the blackboard jungle Yes, uh, yes, that's right. 1955. Exactly, so, a 50s film. I'd read something similar myself, but I've never seen that film. But I think it has Sidney Poitier in it. Sidney Poitier, yeah. So Somebody likened the Michael J. Fox character to Sidney Poitier. Uh, but obviously, th- th- a film from 1955 is not <laughs> anything like this in terms of uh, uh, production. Um, it's strange. It's I would say if you were to take Death Wish... And cross it with uh, Sister Act, and then cross that with a um, made-for-television Lifetime movie. You get close to what this film is. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is a curiosity. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I went in cold. I didn't even look up the trailer or read the Wikipedia article or anything. I just thought I just took it on on face value and what you told me about it. And you didn't tell me very much. You just let me go in. You just said it was very interesting. And I thought, okay, well, <laughs> that could be anything. <laughs> so let's let's watch it. And at first, I was kind of groaning. I was saying, oh, God, what have we got here? You know, this cheesy sort of 80s kind of, you know, bad acting. You've got Perry King in the lead role. You know, he's a, he's a good-looking guy. He's got that stupid beard, but he's, he's not one of the great actors of our time or anything. But then you have got one of the better actors of our time, Roddy McDowell, turns up. And I thought, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. This is around the time he will have done stuff like Fright Night and things like that. So, you know, 
he's he's obviously starring in stuff that's just like you know it's like Alec Guinness doing Star Wars it's like just give me a job yeah and I'll get through it and and God knows what you know don't know whether it's going to be a classic you don't know whether it's going to just be a turkey and fall on its face or what but um then you know it starts to get cooking then he gets into the school um and the school is covered in graffiti uh they've got like um a metal detector on the way in and an armed guard so in in a, a lot of ways it's kind of like you know it's it's forward thinking it's like because I was thinking, why isn't it class of 1982? Because it was made in 1982, but of course, 1984. Yeah. The collapse it's of dystopian, society, uh, dystopia, yeah. Big Brother is watching, all of that. Because it goes from, it, this is one of those wor- movies that goes from bad to worse to dreadful in terms <laughs> of, of, of its storyline. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, it made me think of things like, you know, years later, you've got films like The Substitute with Tom Berenger. And Dangerous Minds with um, Michelle Pfeiffer. And you've also got the fantastic film Stand and Deliver with Edward James Olmos and Lou Diamond Phillips, which is, again, about, you know, a rough school, but a teacher that makes a difference in these kids' lives. So there was this trend of, you know, rough schools with a teacher that makes a difference films that came afterwards. But like you said, this is more like a rough school where the teacher not so much makes a difference, but turns into Charles Bronson. Yeah. That's, well, I think, I think it's, it's like, what? at the beginning, he's very idealistic. You know, it's all very much, you know, trying to put a mark on these kids are better than you think. And, yeah. you know, believe in the choir and stuff. Yeah. But there comes a point when it's like, fuck them. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, when it gets to a certain point, it's like, oh my God, you know. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Michael J. Fox, who is listed as Michael Fox, it was before he took the J on. So he's like this like chubby little teenager. Um, he turns up in it. It's his first movie role, I believe. First film. This is even before he was in... Family um, Ties, yeah. Family who, Ties, yeah. Exactly. Really, really. And way before Back to the Future. Great to see him in there, though. Nice to see a familiar face in all this, yeah. apart from Roddy McDowell, of course. Uh, so that was fun. Um but yeah, I mean, this gang, they're just so typically 80s, aren't they? They're just like the clothes. It was like this whole thing they had was like punk rock and this punk rock ethos is somehow tied to fascism and Nazism because they're wearing these like Sid Vicious did. They're wearing like swastikas and stuff like that. They even did a bloody Nazi salute at some point. And that is basically a representation of the decay of American society. And then you've got these nice clean cut kids like Michael J. Fox and his buddy. And if you notice at one point is his double denim buddy has the American flag uh, patched on his jacket and they're raising the flag and they're like wholesome, good American kids. And then, you know, one of them gets uh, some it's like cocaine or something sold to him and he's like sniffing it. Next thing, he's climbing up the flagpole. Hey, guys! And he falls off the flagpole to his death, bringing the American flag down with him. The symbolism couldn't be more stark, you know, in terms of what it's trying to represent. Because oh, it, it kind of goes in uh, moments, doesn't it? Because you, there's the moment that they sell, I think it's angel dust or something. It's some kind of... Uh... All oh, right, crazy uh, sniff up uh, shit, you know, and um, some kind of. Yeah. Could I get some kind of crazy <laughs> sniff up sniff shit? Sniff up shit, yeah. That'll be um, that'll be thirty dollars, please. Sniff that cross mounted pussy down by the river. So there's, there's that moment, and obviously the 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 kid he takes it, climbs up the flag pole, and falls off, and that's the kind of, and that's kind of the first moment of. Hmm. These guys are dangerous. They're, they're, what dangerous. they're doing is killing the youth. And the, he's not going to take it. And then kind of, the, the, I guess the second moment is probably um, when they kill all the animals in the science lab. Well, before that, um, we have the fight in the alleyway outside of school. And the fight in the alleyway, And that yeah. comes straight after the flagpole bit because they're like, let's go yeah. and get a drink and, you know, forget about all this. Then they get into like, it reminded me of like police academy or something. It was like ridiculous. <laughs> and they get a bit of, um, you know, a bit of a beating in the alleyway. The teachers do anyway. Uh, Roddy McDowell gets his hand sliced with a razor and um, and Perry King takes one to the head. Did you notice as well that his name's Mr. Norris? So all the yeah. way through, I'm thinking, when's he going to turn into Chuck? 
<laughs> Who the fuck are you? But an elbow would have been a lot better. <laughs> and then of course it's the stabbing in the in the um That's when they yeah, of course they stab Michael J. Fox because they think he's been squealing to the pigs. And it's like that, that build up of tens of rounds. It's instant, 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 and then it just becomes to the point where it's like you cops aren't doing anything, you yeah. know, and uh, he goes after him. Somebody's uh, got to stop this insanity. Now, if you don't do it, I will. Easy, I don't... easy, easy, Mr. Norris. And then we find out that the leader of the bad gang, um, Stegman, or whatever his name is, this toss pot, is actually a, uh, an amazing piano player. And there's, there's, there's an element there, and I was thinking, is he going to eventually win him round and get him to go straight, and he's going to become like the concert pianist of the thing? No, 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 he's not. He's not. He's going to get worse and worse. But you can totally understand why it's become a cult film. Hmm. Absolutely. In it's, that genre. It is, it is, there's nothing else like it. There isn't. It's very, it's very different. And um, although the, the story is... Um, camp melodrama and, and, and completely ridiculous and although the acting at times is uh, God, very very awful. questionable yeah uh, um, on the other hand it's extremely entertaining and um, to a point is I was laughing my head off at some of it yeah. you know uh, when things going bad to worse you know uh, there were so many scenes that it's just making me laugh out loud when Roddy McDowell finally loses it and yeah. pulls the gun on the class that was a hilarious scene not being satisfied with that he goes out in his car afterwards trying to uh, mow them down mow them down and that ends up in some really <laughs> unrealistic uh, car crash where his car explodes straight away and I was just like oh, what's going on here the scene that made me laugh as well was where um, Norris went down and got Stegman's car in the basement of his own apartment building and starts smashing it uh, to get a revenge attack because Stegman's blown up his own car. I think the worst acting in the whole film was from Mary Lynn Ross, who plays uh, Mrs. Norris. That was some terrible acting there. But apparently she was also an executive producer on the film, so... So we know why she got the role. We know why she got the role. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, geez. But, you know, there we go. We can't we can't talk about this film without mentioning that scene yeah. that, that happens later on. That that was where I drew the line with it. That's the kind of bit where I thought, oh, you know, geez, it's going a bit too far, a bit unnecessary maybe, um, when they uh, break into his house and assault his wife. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that's it ceases to be entertainment anymore as far as I'm concerned there. It was just like, oh, God, this is how far we're going. Yeah, I think the problem with it for me was um, I wouldn't have a problem with a scene like that being done in there, but it's how it's done um, and how it's handled um, and, uh, you know, if it has a real purpose. And I think somewhat it has a real purpose because you need something really dramatic to have that switching character for for – for Andrew Norris um, to send know, send him off to send him off you need something really dramatic it can't be basic it's really you know he's already seen these animals do all kinds of shit and he hasn't flipped yet it's got to be something extreme mm. but um, there's a way of doing that I think that could be a lot more tasteful well I just think more. if they just kidnapped his wife and held her by a knife point that would still motivate him enough to leave the concert and go and get him and, and fight for her life as much as his own. So the whole sexual assault and taking a Polaroid, and it was just like, oh, my God. But I suppose really that fitted in with the tone of the rest of the film because, like you yeah. said, completely tasteless, completely, you know, devoid of any kind of, um, you know, sophistication whatsoever. Yeah, and, it, uh, I think, I think for, yeah, for, it's, execu- it's execution of such a thing because – you can even allude to it without showing it, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and stuff like exactly, that. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. And, and, and stuff like that. So there's, there's a way around it. I, but I'm not against the idea, the principle, because, of course, I think there has to be something so extreme um, because of how his actions become then extreme. Yeah. You know, so it's... Absolutely, I, I agree with that. And I think maybe could have been uh, done a little bit better than it was. It was, it was almost laughable. Yeah, you know, I hate to say it, but the the scene itself is you're almost like, oh, that's ridiculous. The acting in it was just stupid, savage, it's like Benny Hill or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
But then, you know, it sends him over the edge. He becomes, you know, this crazed killer himself. But by that point, I found, you know, as as a viewer, I wanted the most horrible deaths possible for these people. Exactly. I wanted to see them burn. I wanted to see them sliced up by the jigsaw, uh, you know, crushed by cars, whatever. I wanted to see that because these they're so irredeemable. Yeah. They're so nihilistic and disgusting as characters. That and there's no that's... other way out for them. It's just got to be like, you're going to die and this teacher's going to make sure of it and I'm going to enjoy it. And I think that's the thing. For every criticism um, that can be thrown at the film, it does a fantastic job of building up these this gang as the most deplorable, <laughs> disgusting people, you know, reprobates. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, yeah. It, you you just like fuck it. I want him dead. I want him mutilated. I want everything. You know, you so become just, like Norris himself. He just become exactly. a crazed killer as a, <laughs> as a viewer, and, and I, I, that's what it does very very well. And and that is that's the praise for it, really. I think yeah, the, it delivers that entertainment value for the end, and it it gets there in, in the correct way. I think full on. It is a full, full on, on film. exploitation yeah. film. Yeah. Considering it I mean it's not like mainstream, but it's not completely, you know, B movie either, you know what I mean, or C movie. No. You know, like you get something like um I Spit on Your Grave or something like that, which was very much a very low budget um, you know, exploitation film. Whereas this is it's got slightly more budget. It's got Roddy McDowell in it, you know, he's he's yeah. bloody he's a known this actor. This isn't this isn't a video nasty. This isn't Last House on the Left or some... Um, but it's as like close that. as you can get to that. In Yeah, in broad appeal, yeah. In broad appeal, exactly. Uh, Jeez, crazy. It's very good. Yeah, you can, and we can see the influence. We, we, we spoke about this, about, you know, uh, where the kid beats himself up in the bathroom, um, which is very reminiscent uh, in Fight, Fight Club. Club. That's uh, exactly what I thought straight away for. This has been lifted from Fight Club. Oh, Fight Club, sorry, has lifted it from this, from this yeah. yeah. So you can see the influence um, to people. Over here. You can imagine people like Tarantino would uh, be well ad- adept at this kind of film, you know? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I was still shocked by it all these years later, you know? I mean, I'm kind of glad I didn't watch it when I was a kid now because it's <laughs> just like, oh, my God, you know, some stuff in there, like the sniffing the drugs, I wouldn't have got that. The, the rape scene and stuff like that would have been – you know, it was disturbing as an adult, never mind as a child. So kind of glad I didn't see it. But um, even if I had, I think we would have seen a heavily cut version of it. Um, you know, a lot of those, a lot of that stuff was cut out for years and years. Um, but at the same time, having said all that, you can see why it's a cult film. Yeah. You can see why it's, you know, still notable all these years later as a sort of curiosity of cinema. And, it, you know, it almost is the the ultimate 80s movie in a, in a lot of ways. Certainly the ultimate 80s exploitation movie anyway. Right, well, what do you think watching this? Have you seen Class of 1984? Are you a fan of the exploitation genre? What do you think of this film? Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. But I think that's all we got to say about that. And that's all I had to say about that. So that brings us on to a few items for movie news that have caught our eye this week. First of which, Dave, is that uh, Letitia Wright has been injured during the filming of Black Panther 2. Do you know Letitia Wright at all? I didn't until I quickly looked her up. Um, I I know her from more TV stuff. I've seen her in Doctor Who and Black Mirror and a few other pieces. I haven't seen Black Panther, obviously, yet. Um, for my shame so I, I don't know her from that but I know her from a lot of other things she's a, she's a very good actress yeah she's really good in Black Panther she plays the younger sister and she's also like a Q type character she invents stuff and weapons and different nice. things about yeah. him so she's like the brainiac of the family and she's uh, you know that's the role she plays she's really good in it actually um, so um, hopefully she's alright obviously been injured doing some sort of stunts because these are action-packed films, and I know that a lot of these uh, younger actors like to do as much as they can of this can. stuff, you know. So uh, hopefully a speedy recovery there. Yeah, so hopefully is. I mean, it says uh, minor injuries, and she was released after a few hours, so hopefully it was just mm. a, a scratch. It is but a scratch. A scratch? Your arm's off. No, it isn't. I don't know who's going to be playing um, the central role, though. Yeah, lost Chadwick Boseman. It's a bit of it is a huge boots to fill in that sense. So 
It'll be interesting well, to see what they do. It, it will be interesting because it's strange because the, uh, Marvel have said they're not recasting him. Okay, makes sense. But they're not going to use digital effects to use his likeness in the film either. So is he just not in it? Well, yeah, it implies really that somebody else takes up the mantle. It's it's one of those things. There's not only one of them. It could be you know because it's in 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 the first one, his father is Black Panther, and then it's passed down to him. Right. So you know it could be passed on to another sibling, one way or another. Maybe I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, good night, forever. In other news, there has been a poster and a sneak peek released for The Power of the Dog, a new film with Benedict Cumberbatch. So this is a new drama film from Netflix. It's based on the Thomas Savage novel. It was written for screen by the director, Jane Campion. Uh, I know it was quite a powerful and popular book at the time, so they've done an adaptation of it. Um, we have got Kirsten Dunst in there. Jesse Plemons, one of your favourites. One of my favourites, yeah. I love Kirsten Dunst too. I'm glad to see her back in something. I haven't seen her in anything for ages, so oh, wow. it's, it's nice that she's she's back, she's working again. And, and good old Benedict Cumberbatch. Good old yeah. uh, BC. Everybody loves BC, right? Does his job perfectly. Yeah, he's a good guy. We love him as Sherlock. We love him as Doctor Strange. And uh, he sounds like he's playing a real piece of work in this one. So this is one to keep an eye on. Yeah, I'm not really hearing much about it, but obviously coming up soon on uh, Netflix at the end of the year. So it's going to be a, a big film. It's got the stars in it. A lot of people who were fans of the book will be interested to see what they do with the film. And in other news, uh, The Expendables 4 is coming, um, and they've cast 50 Cent and Megan Fox in new roles for the film. <sighs> and you have to ask why. Um, because, of course, we've known in the, the previous films, we've had Arnie and Bruce Willis and uh, Chuck Norris and, Harris, uh, you know, every action movie star of the past. So to go, it seems like going away from that, um, you know, 50 cent for Christ's sake, it's like, mm. but um, Barrel scraping is what it is. Yeah. I mean, but Megan Fox as well, you know, who cares? Apparently, expendable. Uh, the pair of them are definitely expendable. <laughs> definitely if, they get, if they get blown to pieces, I might even be tempted to watch this one because, uh, you know, um, Confession time, I haven't watched any Expendables movies. <laughs> so, some of them are quite... The third one was terrible, but the first two are quite fun. But mm. um, It didn't look like my sort of thing, to be honest. I'm not a massive fan of Sly Stallone, uh, especially when he does this kind of stuff. Um, it looked predictable. It looked cheesy. It looked like, you know... Oh, the, it's predictable and cheesy. It's all the sort of that. stuff that, you know, I just can't be arsed with. Jason Statham. It had Dolph Lundgren in, so I was almost tempted to watch it, but... Uh, yeah, look, London's back as well for the for this one. Um, but it, see, uh, there's a, uh, an article about it where they're talking about they kind of want to move away from um, that kind of 80s action and uh, take the franchise in a different direction, which I don't understand that at all. Like, this is the thing with Sylvester Sloan. It's all he does. He just sort of like gets a film and then he just makes loads of them. I mean, yeah. I do like the Rocky films. I do like Rocky. Um you know, they were great films. The first one, especially, is a classic film. The first Rambo film is a good film. But look how far they went with that. That last one was just oh, total, total <laughs> dog shit. Oh, the new, new one I haven't even watched. The, uh... <sighs> Don't bother, mate. Don't bother. It's just awful. It's awful. Uh, and, you know, now he's doing it again with Expendables, and it's just like... <sighs> Do I even care? No, I don't. <laughs> Unless Megan Fox's 50 Cent get crushed under the hammer of Dolph Lundgren. That might happen. Well, if, unless it does, I ain't watching it. <laughs> but there we go. You know, like you said, it's interesting, I suppose, that they're uh, taking that franchise in a different direction. For me, that direction should be straight towards the edge of the cliff and driven <laughs> straight over the edge of it, never to be seen again. But... That's just me. I heard another rumor that you were bitten by a king cobra. Yeah, I was. But after five days of agonizing pain, the cobra died. 
Also, uh, I'd just like to say thanks very much to a friend of ours on YouTube. Uh, the channel is called She Wind. We'll put a link in the description to their channel below. If you want to subscribe to them. They're producing some really funny content. Basically, what it is is like animated um, reviews of movies, but it's, it's the, the way they do is really funny. I'm not going to tell you anymore. You're just going to have to click on the link and check it out for yourself. But they did a video last week to thank everybody who sort of supported them or follows them. And we were in it, Dave. Check it out. Hey, Here's us as animated characters. High five, buddy. <laughs> what do you think of that? That's that's pretty cool. I, it was pretty I love damn that. cool. Yeah. To see really ourselves cool. as animated characters, I was like, made my day. I was like, <laughs> thank you, SheWind. Hey, You're doing absolutely. a great job. We love to watch your videos. We can't wait to see more from you. Keep it up. Great work. That leaves us just enough time to tell you what we've been doing on our website this week. So as usual, we've got our regular This Week in Film History article, which is great for film buffs and people who like lists of births, deaths, events, releases, all that sort of stuff. You can check that out. There's a link in the description below. And also we've got another top five article up this week. It's Ang Lee getting covered. Top five Ang Lee films, of course, as part of our top five director's series the link is in the description down below we also have a brand new review for the movie the green knight starring dev patel um so you can check that out either here on the youtube channel or over on the website again link in the description and would you like a coffee greg oh why not it's a little bit late in the day but let's push the boat out and have a coffee go on then that's it two cappuccinos then i think can i have the little uh, chocolate sprinkles on top Absolutely, absolutely. Pretty <laughs> sipping on a cappuccino. Um, but I think someone's going to have to pay for them because they're oh. a little bit short. So uh, we have to ask our viewers to please buy me a coffee. That's it. Thanks very much. If you have already bought us coffees, I know uh, somebody last week, a good friend of ours, Rachel, who goes by Dr. Artemisia Extra on Twitter, bought us five coffees. So we'd both just like to say thank you very much for your support there, Rachel. If uh, buy me a coffee is not your thing, you can also support us at patreon.com where we've got a couple of packages running. There you can maybe have a say in what we are talking about here on the podcast or what we review on our YouTube channel here as well. So you can go over to Patreon and subscribe to one of the packages there to do that. Again, the link is in the description below. Thanks to everyone for their support thus far. And remember to join us on social media at More Movies For You. That's across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all those different places where you can see things like the movie of the day, which goes a little something like this. If you're looking for 132 minutes of nail-biting, heart-pounding, edge-of-your-seat, no-nonsense, balls-to-the-wall action, then I recommend Apocalypto. Directed by Mel Gibson. But don't worry, he's not in it, so you don't have to look at his stupid face for all that time. And it is a damn fine movie. Don't forget, have a great day. Just enough time to say thanks very much for watching and joining us. I hope you can join us again next time. We won't be here next week. We'll be here the week after that. We're going to have a week off. So we'll see you for More Movies Weekly 24 in two weeks. Until then, take very good care of yourselves. And don't forget to keep watching more movies. Peace. That's it for this video. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And remember to like, share and subscribe right here on YouTube. For more film reviews and articles, join us on our website, moremovies.co.uk. Or join us on social media at More Movies For You. That's on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all across the board, you know the score. If you enjoy our content, please consider supporting us at buymeacoffee.com or join us on patreon.com. Links in the description down below. And for more filmtastic content, click one of the buttons on screen now.